Hi, this is Gary with MacMost Now. On today's episode, let's look at GarageBand 11's new features, flex time and groove tracks. So here I am in GarageBand and I've recorded a simple blues sequence here using my MIDI keyboard. I've gone to great pains to make sure the timing isn't quite perfect. Matter of fact, if I look at it, I can see it doesn't quite fall where you would think just on the uh, based on the guidelines here. So you can see there's room for improvement. Now you're going to hear that difference a lot more when I add a drum track to it. So we'll do that by going to the loops and uh, looking for drums. Let's look for a nice blues drum track. And we'll add this very first one here. I'll drag it in and then I'll make it loop over the extent of the sequence here. Now when I play, this is what I get. So it doesn't sound too bad, but it could be better. As a matter of fact, if I zoom in some more on the track here, I can see exactly where the drum beats are in the audio track and I can see where my key presses are. You can see right here it's not matching up perfectly. So the way to uh, change that is select the drum track here and on the left I've got this little star here and this will turn this into the groove track. Once I do so it adjusts everything and you can see it snapped this to the beginning of that beat there. So it's analyzing this drum track here, figuring out where the beat should be. And then you can see it's matching all of my notes to specific beats. So now when I play it, it will be perfect. So flex timing is a bit more of a manual process. So here I've got something I recorded from a real piano. And I can simply go into the audio region editor down here. First time I click on it, it's going to analyze everything. And then I could drag my cursor over here and I could see that there's three spots that show up. The, the middle line, the bright line, and then two on either side. And this tries to define the area of a note that's being played. And once I select this middle spot here, I can drag it around. So shortening the uh, bit of sound before it and lengthening the bit of sound after it or vice versa. So I can basically alter things a little bit if some note is a little bit off. Now another thing you can do is you can quantize note timing. So this will take the entire track. So I've got a pretty uh, long track here and uh, I can actually make these notes, even though they're not mini notes, these are, these are uh, notes recorded over a microphone, I can make these match the timing a little bit better. So if I expand it enough, I can see what's going to happen. You can see here there's three notes played here. I'm going to match that to 1 16th and you can see them move around and lock into place. Now suppose I wanted to take this pre-recorded track here and match it to this drum track loop that I've added. Now since I recorded this one without actually hearing this track at the same time, they're completely out of sync. So I could fix that with two different techniques. The first is, of course, I need to match the tempo of this with the tempo of the loop. The loop, of course, is professionally recorded, so I'm going to use that. And you can see here it doesn't match at all. It'll end right here, whereas the drums don't end till here. So I can do that by selecting that track. I make sure I have follow tempo and pitch turned on, and I can adjust the tempo here, and I'll adjust it to just the right amount. Actually, I'm going to bring it down. It should be one drum measure less and I'm going to put it right at 106 there and I'm going to then shrink this track down. I don't need the extra loop. And now I should have something reasonably close. And that sounds good. Now I can improve it even further by making this the groove track and it will analyze it and the track next to it and then match them even closer. So there's a quick look at some adjustments that you can make in GarageBand 11. Till next time, this is Gary with MacMost Now.
Want more videos? Just go to the MacMost.com website, click on the videos link at the top, and then you could browse all of the Mac, iPhone, and iPad videos by category.